Today we're making blue cheese. Stilton blue cheese from England. The king of all cheeses. Also known as the happiness cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. My name's Brienne. My name's Brooklyn. And we are the cheese twins. Yep. We're back and it's a snowy morning today. And you'll remember our last cheese video was on cheddar cheese back in the springtime. And uh, today we're taking advantage of the high fat percentage of the milk and we're going to make Stilton style blue cheese from England. This is actually kind of a cheddar-y type of blue cheese. Mm -hmm. And it was first mentioned in the early part of the 18th century and is from a village in England called Stilton. You'll also remember the video that we posted on Gorgonzola Dolce blue cheese. You'll have to check it out over there. That's the Italian style blue cheese. But today, we're making the English style blue cheese. The king of all cheeses, some will say. According to Liz Thorpe, the cheese authority in North America, the aroma of Stilton Blue is milk chocolate rolled in butter. So we're gonna experience that, as well as texture, being about cold butter texture. The flavor should be peanuts and chocolate with a bite. In short, she calls it the Dairy Queen Buster Bar of Blues. Legend has it that the special mold used to create this unique cheese, Penicillium roqueforti, was first discovered when a youth abandoned his lunch of ewe's milk cheese and sourdough bread in a nearby cave when he saw a beautiful young maiden and ran after her, completely forgetting about his lunch of ewe's milk cheese and sourdough bread. Months later, he returned to find that the natural temperature of the cave had transformed the cheese into Rook 40, or blue cheese. Needless to say, I'm sure that the young maiden and the young lad lived happily ever after and enjoyed their cheese Maybe with some chocolate and honey. We're nearing the end of our milking season. <laughs> milking about once a day or once every two days. Pretty soon the buck will be coming in and we won't have any more milk, but we'll have babies come in May. When the weather gets really cold, the amount of milk, so the quantity of milk that we get is much less, but the fat content is a lot higher. So we're still getting a really good yield of cheese. Brie cheese and blue cheese is a really nice one to make at this time because of the high milk fat percentage, but also because of the chillier weather, kind of more of a traditional time to make this type of cheese. Mrs. Piglet. Piglet drinks milk like that. <laughs> Rosie does too and Poco does too. <laughs> Making a mess on his dash That is so funny. It's the bale hammock. Charles made it. He actually slept on it. <laughs> Rosie, 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 pork chop.
about cultures first. And since this is a cheddar-y type of blue cheese, we are going to add our cheddar type culture, which is MA11. You'll remember that from the cheddar video, but then also add some of our favorite mesophilic culture, which is the Floridanica. And we're gonna add this so that we can just incorporate some more of the creamy sweetness that we get from this culture. The MA11 culture, our cheddar culture, will give us the rounded nutty depth of the cheddar cheese. And then lastly, we will be adding our blue mold powder, Penicillium Rook 40. When you go onto cheesemaking.com, you will find four different variations of the blue mold powders that they have. Go for the PRPV, so Penicillium Rook 40 C90. That's the one we like to use here today. The appearance of this mold powder will be a bluish green. It has a really strong flavor and will create in your cheese fast growth, creamy consistency, and a strong tolerance to salt. Okay, all you cheese makers, before we can get started with adding our culture to this going to be beautiful blue cheese, we have to check the temperature. Because it's so cold outside, the temperature of the milk would have dropped. There's a good chance we're going to need to raise it. So it is at 78 and we need to get it to 86 Fahrenheit. As it heats up, we have it quite high and we're just gonna keep stirring it so that it heats up all around it. Okay, now we're going to add our MA11 culture an eighth of a teaspoon of that. Floridanica culture, also an eighth of a teaspoon of that. Sprinkle it on the top and let it absorb the milk before you stir it in. Okay, and now here is the specialty, Pacillium Rook 40. We are going to do a quarter of a teaspoon of the Rook 40. There we go. Okay, so that blue mold, it needs to rehydrate for about five minutes. And because we're using raw milk, we can reduce the culture to between 20 and 40%. In your recipe, you will possibly find uh, another ingredient that's not included in ours today, which is called calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is a salt solution um, that you can add to your milk if you have pasteurized it or bought the milk. Um, calcium chloride helps to restore the natural firmness to the curd. Another ingredient that is sometimes found in your cheese making recipes is called lipase powder. Lipase powder is something that will add a more pungent, sharp taste to your cheese. Lipase and calcium chloride will not hurt anything, but you don't need it if you're going raw. Montre Jack smoked in apple wood in our smoker. And you can see the video up here of Julie and Charles making their amazing homemade smoker. It is absolutely incredible. These are all smoked with apple wood and a bit of birch. They smell amazing and taste even more incredible. So some recipes ask that you rehydrate your Brock 40 in water before you add it to your milk. We haven't found that we needed to, but if you feel like you should, go ahead and do that. Now we're gonna give it a stir. Stilton style cheese is also traditionally made with the addition of cream. We do not have any fresh cream. So that is another reason why we are taking advantage of the cold weather and the higher fat percentage that is in the goat's milk right now. So now this is gonna sit for a half an hour and then we'll add the rennet. It's been half an hour and now it's time to add our rennet. Give it a shake. Quarter teaspoon per gallon, approximately and because we're using raw milk, we can use less rennet. So you've got the rennet in the bottom of your, and now we're going to fill this up about three quarter full with water. So we use Walcorn rennet. It's pure Canadian natural rennet. So we are able to get this stuff right here in Canada. And we're gonna pour this in fairly quick and just get it all mixed in nice and briskly. You don't want to stir it too much, just make sure it's all mixed in. And then you're gonna slow it down. We slow it down because we don't want to get it all swirly in the curd. So now we will let the rennet sit covered for 90 minutes or an hour and a half and then we'll be back. Okay, so this cheesecloth has already been sterilized. The sink has also been scrubbed out with soap and water. So it's ready to have the blue cheese put in the cheesecloth and filled with the curds. 
Now it's time to check the curd for firmness. And you can see how beautifully clean that breaks apart. Now for Stilton, we are not going to cut the curds with the knife. We will cut it with our very large scoop. We're going to use a big bowl to scoop out the curds and keep them as large as possible at this point because we want to conserve the moisture and not let the whey drain out too soon. Now your recipe will possibly say, take your curds out with a slotted spoon. You could do that, but it works just as well to use a great big bowl. And you can see that this edge is nice and sharp. So it's going to cut into the curd really nicely and we can just get a great big chunk. Speckled, speckled cheese. Now you're gonna take the corners of your cheesecloth and tie them in an X fashion. Grab a piece of parachute cord, worked really well for this, to tie it into a bag once we have the knots made. Be really careful at this point to not let your curds come over the edge of your cheesecloth. Once the curds begin, then you have an avalanche of cheese. Very important at this stage, especially if you're doing this in the summertime, to not let this stay open. In the case of there being any kind of flies or bugs in your kitchen, the flies will come into these curds and lay eggs, and you will later find maggots in your cheese. Sure. Unless you want maggot cheese, make sure you cover it up. And now what's gonna happen is the cheese is gonna sit in its own way for 90 minutes and continue to ripen. And this is also going to increase the creaminess and also the moisture content. 90 minutes and we'll be back. Hi, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back. It's been an hour and a half. And now we're going to take out the whey, um, save it, and you can use it in your bread or in your cakes or drink it so you can make whey to lemonade or go give it to your goats. Now make sure that before you move your cheese, you have your hanging apparatus prepared. We have set up over here just a couple of stools and a chair and a piece of wood. Make sure that you have a rug or a towel underneath so that any spills will not damage your flooring. So the way we like to do it is bring it up around here. Down again. And make a square knot. Right over left, left over right. Please. <laughs> it's not high, en um, high enough, so we're gonna just adjust here. Now this is another use for cheese presses. Okay. Multi-use cheese presses. There we go. All right, this is my yeah. patented idea. Now we're gonna let our curds drain for half an hour, and in about 15 minutes, we're gonna just move this around a little bit just to help um, take away the matting that happens around the cloth, and then it'll just allow it to drain a little bit more freely. And you could taste your curds as well. It's a nice time to do that. If you would taste any hint of fruitiness or fermentation, you would want to make this maybe into cottage cheese or something like that. But these curds are tasting really, really good. Our cheese has finished its time of hanging and you will know that it's finished by looking to see if it's still dripping. There are a few drips still coming out of our cheese. It's been plenty enough time though. If you have a small batch of cheese, you will only have to leave your cheese hanging for half an hour to 45 minutes. But with this bigger batch, we have had to leave it hanging longer. It's ready for the next step. So we're going to take our bag of curds and go back into the sink. And then we're gonna gently press it for the whole night. Okay, so yeah, this is a really big batch of cheese. We have a good yield here. Another factor that has influenced this cheese having such a large yield is we used a little bit more rennet than what we would have had to. Um, we used two teaspoons of rennet. You would be able to get away with one teaspoon of rennet for raw milk Stilton. If we had used less rennet, we would know that our, our curd is gonna be a lot softer and the yield would probably be a little bit smaller than what we see right now. If you want a harder cheese, a little bit more rennet, 
If you want it softer, a little bit less. Now we're gonna just work the curd a little bit. These are the cheese mice in the cheese kitchen. And be really gentle with your curds. The softer curd cheeses, you wanna preserve that moisture in the curds. So you can see a lot more of the whey has come out. And now we're going to just gently twist this a little bit just to keep it more uniform. And we're gonna rig up a little press on top of it. We talked earlier about Stilton being a cheddar type of cheese. And everything that's happened today, you'll notice is kind of similar to the process that we took when we did our previous video on cheddar cheese in that the cheese has kind of been cheddared, I guess, all day when we're hanging it, we're letting it sit in the way. It's just having lots of time to develop its acidity, which will be influential later on in the cheddary nutty taste. Piece of plastic here to keep the moisture from infiltrating into the board. Now we have a, just a pot of water, about eight pounds, eight or 10 pounds or so. Make sure it's not too heavy, because if it's too heavy, you're gonna have too much loss of weight too quickly. You want it to drain nice and gently and slowly. We're gonna leave it here overnight. See you in the morning. You're just gonna stand here and look at the camera again. <laughs> okay, all you curd nerds. <laughs> Good morning. It's just slightly past nine o'clock and uh, we're going to pull it out of its press apparatus, and then we're going to start the milling process. And we're going to break our curds into one inch chunks. This is kind of like a dry jack. Beautiful. There we go. Beautiful curd, look at that. Okay, let's give it a taste now. Really important as well to taste it before you salt it because the salt would mask a lot of any fermentation or fruitiness which we would want to be on guard for. But we're good. So now we're going to start breaking it up. Again, you'll notice this is a similar process as what we experienced in our previous video on making traditional style cheddar cheese. And the reason that we make these chunks one inch rather than half inch is because we want to preserve moisture in the curds. So all of our curds are broke up into approximate one inch cubes and now we're going to salt our cheese curds and you want approximately one tablespoon per gallon of milk. And we have coarse ground salt here today. Best to use for your cheese making. So we got one, two, Good, Brooke? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we aged it for three to four months, then you're gonna really get a salty taste. However, our family's favorite way to eat Stilton blue cheese is about 25 to 30 days old. So that's definitely a young cheese. We're gonna add a little bit more mm -hmm. salt. Otherwise, we found that with only 25 to 30 days of aging, it doesn't create too much of its own sodium. Natural salt. Natural sodium. Okay, so now it's time to write an article on blue cheese and head over to the press. New England cheese making, most amazing cheese press ever made. Go there. So we have our Plyven cheesecloth in there and it really works good to have a piece of elastic around there so that the Plyven doesn't go in with the curds. We got a lot of curds today. Hopefully it's all gonna fit. This cheese does not need to have much weight on it. Maybe five or 10 pounds will put on. The curd itself will press the cheese. And so you put the curd on top of the cheese. That's a lot of curd. So we're going to put down about 
five pounds of pressure. There is not much weight, there's no weight coming out right now. A lot of the weight has already come out through the sink last night and the bag draining, but there will be some. And the curds will consolidate today. They'll just kind of start to meld together. We're gonna to come back in half an hour or 45 minutes, um, about four times throughout the day and just keep on flipping it so that the drainage is even. Okay, so it's been uh, just over 45 minutes. We've left it a little bit longer because we wanted to make sure that the curds have consolidated. And we have seen some whey dripping here. And now we're gonna gently take it out and flip it around, but we are not going to peel away the ply band cheese cloth at this point because the curds are very breakable still. And that's fine if, you're, if your curds touch the bottom of this. Don't worry about that and push that up to the top and then you can flip and we'll put our cover back on. And again, you can put your press down for about five pounds or less for 45 minutes or so. Now we are going to do our fourth flip. After that, we're going to leave the cheese for eight hours, flip it one more time, and then over the course of four days, you're going to flip it two or three times every day. Throughout this entire process, you should keep your cheese at approximately 20 degrees Celsius, about room temperature or slightly below. We are going to be waiting and watching for the beautiful bloomy rind to appear. Take about four or five days. And now at this point, it is no longer necessary to put any type of weight on the cheese. Good morning, everybody. We are now into the morning of the sixth day of making our Stilton style blue cheese. Every day since we started our cheese, we have flipped it two times per day. You should do this morning and evening. You should also make sure that you are keeping your, the temperature of your kitchen at approximately 20 degrees Celsius. So approximately room temperature, not too cool, or you won't have the development of a lovely bloomy rind and that penicillium roque 40 won't begin to um, bloom in your cheese. But if it's too warm, your cheese will start to sweat and it will develop too much acid and you don't wanna go that way either. So stay about the 20 degrees Celsius mark. All right, now we're going to check the cheese. We're going to smell it and you'll be able to also smell the development of the um, penicillium candidum, which is the white mold that also comes with this cheese. Here we go. Okay, so we've been flipping this twice every day. So there's a kind of like a nutty, musty smell that's coming from the cheese right now. It smells beautiful. There's no fruity or fermented smell. So that's a good thing. So now we're going to flip it and we are also going to remove the ply band cheesecloth because we now know for sure that all of our curds are well consolidated together so it's not going to fall apart so take a look at this you're going to see a soft fuzzy bloom look at that i wish you could smell it it's beautiful fresh and cavey so we're going to just take it right out of the ply band cheesecloth and flip it this is the most exciting part of making your blue cheese, the Stilton style blue, is we begin to see this beautiful, it's like a cloudy fairy-like covering that the cheese begins to have and it's all white. But in about two days, it will start to bloom with blue, the penicillium roque 40, that blue mold powder that we sprinkled in the, in the milk at the beginning. That is gonna begin to be activated, but it's not quite started yet. So. We flipped our cheese. We're gonna put it back on the base here. Now it still is fairly breakable. Just put this back on to keep everything in its place and allow the molds to continue to develop. We'll flip it again tonight and keep an eye on it for the next day or two. Watch for the blue mold to begin developing. All of our snow melted and <laughs> It's like spring again. Blooming. Yay! Almost and what happened overnight? All since our last video yesterday morning, our blue Stilton has bloomed. 
it's actually quite warm. It's really interesting at this stage. The cheese kind of starts to slightly sweat a little bit, which we have a, quite a cavey environment. We're not going to leave it in here too much longer. We might put it in the fridge tonight. The fuzzy white softness, but inside of that, you see the beautiful blue mold coming. It's becoming a cheese mushroom. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it. Still be very gentle. The curds are quite breakable yet. There we go. It's flipped. And we're gonna put this back on. Tonight we'll come back and we'll probably pierce it and put it in the fridge. Good evening. Our blue cheese has continued to bloom all day. Take a look see. Food and lolly. Wow, did you say boo or did you say blue? Yes. Your baby has blossomed. The baby, the baby, <laughs> ooh, I love the baby. <laughs> this has been exactly seven days. This cheese has not been in the refrigerator. It's been here on the counter the entire time. Next, what we need to do is pierce the cheese. This is what's going to create the beautiful bluish green veins that you see as being a characteristic of blue cheeses. You need a, a knitting needle, <laughs> clean it off really good. You're going to pierce the top and then you're gonna pierce the bottom, particularly because this is such a thick cheese. If it was smaller, you would probably only need to pierce from the top. About a half inch, half inch to one inch apart. And that is going to create airways for the penicillium rook 40, the blue mold, to be able to have a chance to breathe and grow inside those holes. We're going to wrap it in some clean cheesecloth, put it into a bucket, and put it into the fridge. This is our mock cheese cake. Ideally, we would like to keep the cheese at approximately 90% humidity, and that's gonna happen in a little bucket because this cheese has lots of moisture in it still. And when it's in a little bucket, you have to make sure you take it out every day to get some air or it'll ammonia and flip your cheese as well as adding likely some paper towel works good or just some regular dish towels to help soak up some of that moisture because we do not want it too moist. And we're not gonna try and pull it out later. You just flip it out. We're also going to label it. Make sure you label your cheese so oh, yeah. you know when it was born. Just take another cloth and put this on top. We're gonna take it out, redo the cloths every day for 25 to 30 days. You give them new paper towel every day? Yeah, and then we dry it and then put it back in the next day and kind of just keep rotating. So then you don't waste it. Hi everyone! Today is time for the blue cheese checkup. It has been 30 days since we last were here and every day, once a day, we have taken the cheese out of his little cave and we have added new paper towel to it to help to take up any excess moisture and made sure that our cheesecloth also stayed nice and fairly dry and we're gonna go check it out so come on it's definitely smelling bluey so there's paper towel lined on the bottom to help pick up the excess moisture and then we have the cheesecloth. We can see some red bacteria linens growing as well. We're gonna scrape some of that off today. It has a very 
strong smell already at 30 days. for like three more months and oh boy, it'll get strong. Oh man. Is it strong? Whoa, that's like really, really creamy. Marble. Mmm. It's very melty, mm -hmm. like butter. Ooh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Look at that. Oh. Look at, this is the- This is so amazing. This is the happiness cheese. We get to, oh. Okay, so my analysis is that this cheese is dense and gluey. The texture is buttery leather. Kind of like suede leather. <laughs> yeah, like Julia's moccasins, her buttery moose hide leather. Yeah, definitely mushroomy. Kind of like cooked portobello mushroom. Mm -hmm. Something like that. The dense part, yeah. yeah. And in looks, it's like gray brick marble. Looks like an old stone chimney in England or Ireland. Mm -hmm. Like, can't you just see the chimney, you know? Fudgy mold. Cheesy, fudgy mushroom. And if you're looking for a recipe to use your blue cheese in, check out the video that Sarah made a couple years ago on how to make blue cheese stuffed figs. So that concludes our Stilton blue cheese making adventure. Making the most romantic of all cheeses. Mm -hmm. And if you like this video, please put a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell button, and share it with a friend, especially if you know someone who makes cheese. And also don't forget to check out cheesemaking.com for awesome cultures, awesome cheese press, and, and fantastic service. Fantastic <laughs> service. And tons of free recipes yeah. online as well. And, and keep, keep your eyes peeled for future, future cheese making videos. <laughs>
You girls are not cheese nerds, you're cheese nerds. Mm -hmm. And remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye.